Hello, friends. Hello, church. It's um, not that those are mutually exclusive. Um, you're both my friends, and I know many members of our church community are going to hopefully be seeing some of this. Um, I just wanted to um, send a message out to bring what comfort I can in this crazy time that we're living in and, and try and get our hearts focused back on God when when um, they're being yanked by fear and by the realities of what's happening around us. None of us having lived through anything like this. In fact, very few people in history have lived through something as catastrophic and cataclysmic as the events that we're presently experiencing. Um, Teresa and I are presently in Minnesota and uh, you can kind of see what Minnesota's like in the spring. This is considered spring in Minnesota where the grass has almost turned green and you only see a few piles of snow here and there. In fact, there's one last bit of snow at we're staying at Teresa's brother's. We're here because um, some of you know Teresa's dad, Wally, passed away. Not from the coronavirus. He was having um, kind of mini strokes for a while and his body just um, said it's time. In fact, about a week before or two weeks before, he, uh, he told uh, Teresa, he was on a kind of video call with Teresa and her brother, and, and he said, I want to go see Mavis. And Mavis was his wife who died several years ago. He said, I, I want to go see Mavis. And um, it was kind of a just beautiful picture of the hope that we have as Christians. Um, I, I've been uh, thinking about a couple things. One thing I've been thinking about during this time is, is um, uh, just speaking to our own hearts. And I came across this devotional in, in a book put out by Tim Keller. It's um, called The Songs of Jesus, and uh, if you can see it here, it's the, uh, the Songs of Jesus, and it's based on the Psalms. And uh, Tim Keller in, in Psalm 30, or in, for March 30th, this was a couple days ago, it just kind of hit me. It's, it reads um, from verse 6, Psalm 42, verse 6. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls unto deep in the roar of your waterfalls, and all your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love, and at night his songs, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to the God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer in mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying all, the long, all day long, Where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. And Tim Keller comments on that and says this, As the psalm proceeds, we see that the phrase, I will yet praise him, is not merely a prediction of change, but an active exercise. When we are discouraged, we listen to the fearful speculations of our hearts. What if this happens? Maybe it's because of that. Here instead we see the psalmist not merely listening to his troubled heart, but addressing it, talking to his soul, taking his soul in his hand and saying, Remember this, O soul. He reminds his heart of the loving things God has done. He also tells his heart that God is working within the troubles. The waves swept over him are your waves. This self-communion is vital, is a vital spiritual discipline. He goes on with a prayer. Lord, I need to learn how to preach to my own heart rather than just listen to its foolish or panicky chatter. Help me learn effectively, say to my unruly inward being, put your hope in God. And, the, and my challenge to us today and in, in the days that are to come, because I know they're not going to be easy days to come, is that we would put our hope in, in God. It's, it's okay to be afraid. All of us are, I think, going through times of fear. But we don't need to let that fear control and dictate our lives, be the director of our lives. Our hands, our lives are in, in, in good hands. They're in God's hands. And I also want to challenge us during this time that one of the scriptures that's been coming to me and over and over again during this time is, is the words that Mordecai said to Esther when... Um, when uh, the king had put out an edict to have all Israel um, pretty much destroyed. And um, it wasn't a, a physical plague, but it was basically a governmental edictal plague that um, 
that the Israelites were facing. And Mordecai came to Esther, and Esther was one of the king's wives, and, and said, Who knows that God has put you here for such a time as this, that you might save many lives. And I don't think any of us want to be in the situation we're in right now. I think all of us would like to um, take a really long nap until all this is over. We'd like to not have to f face the next day and some of the challenges that we have to face. I think specifically of you who work in the um, healthcare fields. I'm sure that every day is just a, a challenge and, and it's got to be somewhat scary, especially if you have family and children and you wrestle with that. And, and my prayers are with, with you, especially all of you that I know in our church and family members of our church that are nurses and, and doctors and healthcare workers and, and on the front lines. But my prayers go out to you. But I've also been thinking about this passage and I've been thinking about my own life and, and the life of all of our staff and all of your lives. That for such a time as this, God has placed you wherever he's placed you. And he's got a purpose for you in that place. And I want to challenge all of us to not shrink back, to not shrink and shrivel into our own holes, although we have to stay in our own homes. That's one of the things we can do during this time. But, but to, not, to not cave to fear that we would be people who continue to respond and continue to do and be the things that God has called us to do and be. For such a time as this, as God prepared his people, his children who love him, his children who, whom our hearts are filled with Christ, whose life is filled with his spirit and the hope that we have in his spirit and in him and in the future that he has for us. I will yet hope in him. This too shall pass. So God bless and um, have, have a peaceful, great week. We'll be flying back this Saturday, which is in a couple days. Um, the airport, when we flew out, had literally, there was nobody there. There was nobody there except the cleaning crew. And uh, the airplane had six people on it. And uh, uh, so, but um, we'll be back on Saturday morning. And I hope to see you all on, well, I won't see you, but hopefully maybe you'll see me on Sunday as we'll be bringing a message on um, as we as we enter into into Holy Week, God bless you. And again, Teresa and I love you. And our, may the peace of Christ and the grace of God go with all of you in whatever you're called to do this week. Amen.